Hi, and welcome to this third video of a four video series that's all about the Drill Point Gauge Project. The Drill Point Gauge Project is our introduction to bench work project. And today we're going to be looking at filing the contour, stamping, and finishing. Now that the roughing is complete, I can see that my scribe line is just barely visible and that my surface is nice and straight and very flat. So we can now finish this surface by draw filing with a fine tooth file. So I can install my part in a vise and using a fine tooth file with a back and forth movement, or if you prefer by draw filing, I'm going to come and finish this surface. Once the surface is finished, I can remove the part from the vise and using a very fine tooth file, deburr the edges of the surface that I've just produced. Now I didn't deburr it beforehand because I would have erased those lines that I was following. So deburr only once the surface is finished. So there, that surface is complete. It's nice and straight, nice and flat, with a nice, fine, constant surface finish. We can now move on to the filing of the second surface, the 59 degree surface. We're going to cross file for starters for roughing, and then we're going to draw file for our finishing. So pretty well the same sequence as the last surface, but this time we're going to use a protractor because not only does the surface have to be flat and true, but it also has to be at a 59 degree angle from our first surface. Once we've completed the rough cross filing, we can finish the surface by draw filing using a fine tooth file. Now would be a good time to deburr the surface using a very fine tooth file. Before we go any further, we're going to use our protractor positioned at 59 degrees to verify the angularity of the surface we've just produced. Now you may have noticed that we've lost our reference surface, so we're going to have to use our original reference surface from the drawing, which is the surface that we've just completed. And this creates a problem because we can't lean the reference surface of our protractor up against the reference surface of our part. To get around the problem, I'm going to start by visually aligning the two reference surfaces. Then I'm going to use a flat surface to ensure that the two surfaces are properly aligned. Now that I know that they're properly aligned, I can visually verify the angularity of my surface. And I can clearly see that we're at 59 degrees. So we can move on to our next operation which is the filing of our one and one eighth of an inch radius. 
Now I'm going to file this radius using the same approach as I used when I cut it with the saw. I'm going to produce a series of flat surfaces rather than trying to file an arc right off the bat. Now once I'm done roughing out this arc, I'm going to draw file the surface to unify those flats and produce a smooth arc. So let's start with the coarse file. Now we want to avoid vibration as much as possible. So make sure that you hold the part as deeply as possible in the vise. Using a coarse tooth file, we can start by cutting the first of a series of flats that will make up our rough arc. If possible, you always want to saw horizontally. So move your part rather than readjusting your movement. Once the roughing operation is complete, you should have something that looks like this. A succession of flat surfaces that roughly form the radius to come. Now, to unify all those flats, we're going to use a draw filing technique and a fine tooth file to really bring all those flats together and produce one uniform surface. So we're using a fine tooth file and a draw filing technique. You know that your finishing operation is complete when your surface looks something like this. A nice unified surface that closely hugs the scribed line. So now we can redo the same series of operations, but on the second arc, the half inch one on the other end of the part. Once the two arcs are complete, we can start to think about the tangent surface that joins the two arcs. Unlike the first surface that we did, this surface isn't particularly accurate. There's no specific dimensions on the plan, but Take the time to do it properly. We want our part to look good. Now that we're done finishing the contour of the part, we can start to think about a rough finish of the primary surfaces, which will permit us to continue with the next series of operations, which are the identifications of the holes. And we can start with the surface that we put the layout die on. Use a shop towel to protect the back end of the project and a small piece of aluminum to shield the part from the anvil of the C-clamp that we're going to use to hold the part onto the corner of a workbench. So we can install our C-clamp. Now be very careful. We don't want to deform the part. We just want to stabilize it so that we can draw file it easily. It's important to avoid over tightening. If you tighten too much, knowing that the workbench is slightly flexible, well, you can bend your part. You have to be very careful. So we can use our fine tooth file 
to just lightly draw file the surface. Remember, this is an intermediate finishing operation. We still have to punch the dimensions. Now notice that we install the part on the corner of the workbench to avoid the handle hitting the workbench. Well, at this point, your project should look something like this. And if that's the case, well, you're ready to move on to the stamping operations. Now, we're going to stamp the size of the threaded holes on the front of the project and our names on the back. We'll be doing the scale at a later date in another video. So, we're at the anvil and we're ready to start punching. Now, remember, on the front, we're going to identify the size of the threaded holes. And on the back here, we're going to identify the part with our initial and our last name. Now for the holes, we're going to identify them with their thread sizes. And it's important to do it all in the same plane. So not necessarily in line, but in the same plane. So we can put hole A as 540, hole B as 632, hole C as 832, and so on and so on. Now remember, it's important to be very attentive to what's going on. It's important that this looks nice. And we're going to start with our 1 8 number punches. I like orderly things, so we're going to start with hole A. And remember to say it in that order. Now hole A is a 540, so we're going to stamp 5.40 with the point at mid-height of the lettering. It's important that the first punching be very light. That way, if we're misaligned, we can readjust its position. Okay, so there's 540. So let's take a closer look at that. We can see here that our 540 is stamped, but that our 4 is a little too low and that our 0 is too low and slightly rotated. Since our first stamping was very light, it's not going to be difficult to realign those numbers without marring the part permanently. So we're going to start by restamping the 4 slightly higher and restamping the 0 slightly higher and slightly rotated. We will then perform a deep stamping operation with a larger ball peen hammer. That will be followed by a light draw filing that will be followed by a final stamping and a final draw filing. So I can now restamp my number 4 by inserting the number 4 punch in the original marking and rotating slightly and raising it slightly. I do the same with the number 0 punch. Now that my numbers are realigned, I can move on to a deeper stamping. For the deep stamping operation, we're going to use a larger ball peen hammer. Now remember, we don't want to swing a ball peen hammer, we want to let it fall on the punch. So the larger the hammer, the bigger the impact, and the deeper the lettering. Once hole A is complete, we can move on to hole B. 
and hole B is a 632. So we can return to our medium sized ball peen hammer, find our number 6 number punch, and start the whole sequence over again. So I've lightly punched 632, so I'm going to readjust a little bit. I'm going to move my 3 slightly to the left. And now with our larger ball peen hammer, we can move on to our in-depth stamping. Once the stamping is complete, you're going to want to draw file the whole of the surface to remove the bumps produced by the stamping and really make your numbers pop. Now we've done the 540 and the 632, but you still have the 832, the 1024 and the 1032, as well as stamping your initial and your last name on the back of the project. We still have the scale to produce and we'll do that at a later date in another video. For us, all that's left is a light draw filing to give a nice uniform finish to the part. One of the great things about being a teacher is that we don't actually have to complete any projects. The students have to complete the projects. All I have to do is show how to do it. So we're going to stop here for today, and which means that we'll meet again in part four of this video where we're going to be looking at the uh, making of the graduated scale on the gauge. So until then, have fun. Be safe and happy machining.